Hey guys, welcome to another Bitter Butter Render Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to break objects into pieces and add a physics simulation to the pieces just like this. And now this is pretty cool. Make sure to watch till the end because this will help you a lot. And let's get on with the video. Okay, so first of all, to do this method, we need to enable an add-on. Now, don't worry, this add-on is built into Blender and all you need to do is enable it. So to do that, we can go over here into the edit, then preferences. Make sure you're in add-ons and search up cell fracture add-ons. And you'd see that in the object section, there's something called cell fracture. And you can click on the tick button, which will enable it. Now you can click out of that. And now there are two methods to access the add-on. One, you can go over here into object, scroll down, go into quick effects and click on cell fracture. But the method I prefer doing as it's more easily accessible is clicking function f3 and searching up cell fracture once you click it you have this menu now this menu might be a little overwhelming to look at especially considering that there are many buttons and options here but don't worry we'll go through each one of them okay so first of all we got something called a point source now the point source over here is that we've got something called own vert child vert own particles child particles and annotation pencils now some of these might be familiar to you first of all the own verts will break the object depending on how much vertices the object actually has in this case this cube has eight vertices right so that's why when we break it it breaks the cube into eight pieces one two three four five six seven eight if you don't want to change the physical shape of the cube, but you still want to break it up into more pieces, you can always subdivide the cube by clicking right and subdivide in edit mode. Okay, now we got something called child verts. And now the word child in Blender you might be a little familiar with as it's referred to when you pair another object to another object. Well, there are two phrases one is called the parent object and the other called the child object so what really happens is that let's say the cube is the parent we can add a icosphere in the middle of it shift click on the cube just like this and then click control and p and click object keep transform and now what that essentially does is it pairs the second object to the first object that you've chosen now the parent is the object that is controlling the other object while the child is the object that follows the parent object so in this case if we click function f3 object quick effects and cell fracture if we click child verts all it's doing is that if you have a child added it will break up the parent object using the amount of vertices the child object has as you can see, just like this. Okay, now for the own particles and child particles, let's not worry about it too much as they're very specific to a certain scene because we will be using particle systems for that. Okay, now for the annotation pencil, you probably might have heard, this, uh, heard of an annotation pencil. It's really just a new name for the grease pencil. If we click that, all, we're, all we have to do is click on annotate Make sure to choose surface, so we draw on the surface of the cube, and really just scribble all over the cube. This is used for when you want a really specific break in your object. So now we can click on function F3, cell fracture, make sure annotation pencil is chosen, click OK. And you can see that it's broken up into this. Now if you want to erase the annotation, Hold, drag until you get the annotation eraser, and really just erase everything there is, just like that. And then we got the source limit and the noise. Now the source limit is literally just limiting how much the pieces can break into. That's pretty straightforward. Then we got the noise. The noise is how uniform you want the objects to break. For example, with the noise of one, if we break it into pieces, you can see that all the objects are really similar to each other. While if we go with the noise of one or really any value in between, it 
the pieces will be so much more different to each other. Now, if you want the most realism, I would prefer going with a value of one. But if you want just a straightforward break the pieces up into equal shapes, then I would prefer you go with a noise value of zero. Anywhere in between is fine as well. There we got the scale. Now, that's really just the X, Y, and Z angle. Let's say if you want the pieces to be broken in more of like a column figure where they're stretched out you can change those but i usually just keep them at one okay now we got the second stage that is called recursive shatter and if you can't tell by the name recursive shatter is literally just the pieces recursively breaking for example this recursion value shows that if the pieces are broken into eight pieces how much times the broken pieces will be broken again so if we have a recursion value of two the the object will break into eight pieces then those objects will break another time and then the source limit is literally just the same as this it's literally just limiting how much time it recursively shatters the pieces into and then these are just simple values that we don't want to worry about too much randomness obviously changes how random the objects move around or break into and then we got what type of pieces it breaks into or where it breaks into such as the cursor closer cursor far and then we got mesh data now the mesh data is all about the texture and similar stuff like the smooth smooth interior if you click that it will it will smooth out the interior of each piece i usually don't prefer that but if if you want it for a really specific scene where you actually need the interior to be smoothed out then you would use that just make sure to subdivide your cube a little then the sharp edges is literally just the opposite of smooth interior. The object will be sharp and the edges will be well defined. Then we got apply split edge match data. Now you really need to have the match data because if we do have a texture and we break the pieces up, we want the texture to be the same and not get mixed up and messed up when we do break up the objects like this. Then we got the physics. The physics don't do much because we will be adding physics properties later on and we don't want to mess this up now the object recenter especially if you're adding simulation like a physics simulation you need to have recenter ticked where if you know the origin point which is a tiny yellow dot it will recenter the origin point to each piece in the middle if you don't it will mess up your whole simulation then everything else we don't have to worry about so make sure to choose your settings make sure to break your piece like this and when you do break this piece you might see that there's this weird shading issue going on where it starts glitching out and that's because all it does is that it duplicates your cube and then breaks that into pieces so you can go ahead and hide or delete the original object you can see that we've got now now to add the physics simulation make sure to choose a piece i usually go with the big piece so it's the most visible go into the physics properties Click on rigid body and you can go ahead and change a bunch of settings. I'm not going to do that right now. And since this piece is the one activator, now we need to copy the physics simulation onto all the other pieces. And to do that, we can go into wireframe mode, select all the pieces. Make sure the active one is the piece that had the physics simulation. You can make sure that is if it's highlighted a lighter color than the other ones. If it isn't, you can always shift click on that piece. Then you can click on object, rigid body, go down until you find copy from active. You can click on that and you can see that well, we've added a physics simulation to all the pieces. Right now one issue is that when you do have complicated shapes, the object might fly everywhere. They might just go crazy and haywire and that's because they're really just touching each other. Right, and to fix that, all we can do is first of all zoom in a little, go into wireframe, choose all the pieces, click on this, click on individual origins, scale, and really just scale them a little tiny bit so it's not too visible that they're not touching each other, but enough so they don't go haywire and fly all over the place. Now, this wasn't the issue for me because I was using the simple cube. But in this case, when I was using this head statue, it did mess up my whole scene. And 
a lot. Now um, I've added a floor. I've set all that up. You can see that we've got a physics simulation for our cube. Now one thing um make sure not to change is that for the floor I did add a passive rigid body with the shape as a mesh because it is a plane but all these objects make sure it's a convex hull because that is what I found works best. I did try mesh but convex hull was better. And using this method, you can do so many stuff. You can make sure the physics is animated, so when a bullet hits glass, it breaks into pieces, add smoke simulations to it. That was it for today's tutorial. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the notification button so you don't miss out on other tutorials just like this. And I'll see you in the next one.